Hello, lovely ones. Welcome to Mass Clinic Multimedia Series. In this video, we want to start a new series. And the topic we are going to look at is probability. Probability. We want to look at probability, but then it's going to be in, um, in the series four. And so I'll start today's lesson with um, introduction. Then we continue from there. And I'm sure you have your notebooks, you have your pens, you have your calculators ready for the lesson. This is not a video just to watch and relax. You need to get your tools ready when necessary you solve questions on your own. I will give you questions that I will say try your hand on and then I'll provide answers for you to know whether your answers are right or not. And so for the introduction part, we are going to look at the definition of the word probability. We want to look at the application of probability in real life situation and explain some basic terms that we use in probability. So let's start. Now, people use the term probability many times each day. I'm sure maybe today you might have also used probability in the course of your conversation. For example, physicians will say that a patient has a 50-50 chance of surviving a particular operation or surgery. Other physician may also say that um, she is 95% certain that a patient has a particular disease. People use it a lot. They will say, oh, there's a probability that today I will visit my uncle. Now, that is probability. If we are not sure of something, and we can quantify the chance of the thing happening or not, you are dealing with probability. Now, if I give you this picture that you see here, it's a game, it's an experiment. We are not sure the outcome. This is a football match. We are not sure whether team A is going to win or team B is going to win. Now, if we have an experiment whereby we are not sure of the outcome, then we can calculate probability of that experiment. If I give you these this numbers, we have one up to 100. What is the probability that if I ask you to choose only two numbers, you're going to choose 35 and 57. If you're not sure, but can we quantify the chance of you choosing those numbers and getting it right? If you can do that, then it is about probability. If I'm to throw this die or roll this die, the possible outcomes are here. Can I predict that if I roll this, that I'm going to play two, or I'm going to get two, five, seven, whatsoever. Since I cannot predict the outcome and I can quantify the chance of maybe getting it or not, then it's probability. You can see this also as a game, an experiment, scratching and win. You're not sure what will happen if you scratch game three or game four or game five. So that also, is a chance of whether you get it or not. If you're about playing a game, a football or something, we normally toss which team take what side. We are, we are not sure of the, of the outcome of this particular toss and so it becomes an experiment or it could be something that we can predict the outcome. Can you predict the color that this particular um, row is going to, arrow is going to be on? If you can predict, and you can quantify it, that also becomes probability. What then is probability? What then is probability? So by definition, by definition, we are saying probability is the branch of mathematics. So it means it's not just a topic, it's a whole branch of mathematics that deals with measuring or determining quantitatively the likelihood that an event or an experiment will occur. If you can, let's say I'm playing the football, match or there's a football match going on and you can predict the outcome and quantify it so the word is quantitatively okay the word is quantitatively if you can quantify the likelihood that that event you are predicting will occur or not occur is what we refer to as probability and so today you will travel and you say oh it's likely today i'll travel can you give me the value or the, the chance in terms of value, maybe 10% chance that you travel, 70% chance that you travel, then you are dealing with 
probability. So we all do probability every now and then, unknown to uh, us we are doing probability. Why do we study probability in school? Very, very important. This is so important we have to study probability in school. In probability, you will learn that people study probability to do great things in life. If you go to meteorological department, they predict weather by observing trends from the data collected over many years. So they can tell you that today there's 90% chance that it will rain. That is probability. And so if you go to the local department, that is the weather forecast people, they are purely working with probability. Again, if you come to sports, being a basketball or football, a coin is tossed, both teams have 50-50 chances of winning that particular toss. And so they decide as whether they are going to start the game or they choose the side they want to start with. And so in sports, we see probability. Medical decisions, also we use probability. I said it earlier on, when the patient is advised to undergo a surgery, they often want to know the success rate of that operation, which is nothing but probability rate. So the doctor will say, oh, you have 50% chance of surviving, or you have 10% chance. I mean, these are some of the reasons why we study probability in school. In insurance companies, we do probability also over there. People tell you pay premium. And then in case you are involved in an accident or something happened, the company will give you this amount of money. How would they know that if they register 200 maybe drivers, by the close of the year, 70% of them will not be involved in an accident. And if that happened, they are going to be in trouble. Let's say you are paying 200 CDs every year and if you are involved in an accident, they will pay you 2,000 Ghana cities. And let's say the place of 100 drivers, and each of them is paying 200 cities a year. And within that year, let's say 70% of them are involved in an accident, and the company will collapse. So they're able to calculate and predict the chances of their making profit for a whole year based on a particular pattern or trend of accident that occur in a particular country or in a particular area, then they can know whether they are going to make money or not. So probability helps in that aspect. Then life expectancy. This is based on the number of years the same group of people have lived in the past. People can be able to tell that, oh, Ghana, our life expectancy is this or that. And so that is probability as well. That is probability as well. So probability is very, very important as far as um, our life is concerned. All right, let's continue. So probability always lies between zero and one. That is a concept that you have to understand. Anytime you calculate probability of an event occurring or not occurring, the value you get as your answer will never exceed one. That value will never go below zero. What it means is that if you find probability of an event and your answer comes as maybe 1.5, then it means you are wrong. If you find a probability of an event and your result comes as negative half, it means you are wrong. You can never find probability that goes below zero or above one. It must always lie between zero and one. And in terms of percentage, it must not go beyond 100%, and it must not go be below 0%. Right? That is what I want you to take note of. Now, let's look at this. If probability is zero, what does it mean? We normally say then it means the event we are going to calculate if probability is impossible event. For example, I give you a die, and I tell you, throw this die, and you are going to get seven if you throw this die you get seven in fact that is impossible event because you can never throw a die and the result comes as seven because the die is supposed to have one two three four five six and there shouldn't be any number beyond six and so if i say what is the probability of you throwing the die and getting seven then your answer is zero i mean it's impossible event then we have certain event when we see the probability is exactly one the probability is exactly one. What does it mean? If I tell you that, okay, this particular um, sack contains balls, number of balls, and they are different colors. What's the probability that when you put your hand in this particular balls, you are going to pick a colored ball, a colored ball? Well, that means the probability is 100% because 
as it stands now, everything in there is a ball and everything in there has a color. So anyone you pick is colored ball. And so the chance of picking a colored ball is 100%, or we say it is one. So the probability of setting is one. As I sit here right now, unless I die, there's a 100% chance that I will eat this morning. And so that is certain. Then we have a situation whereby we have an um, even chance. Okay, we are about playing a game, and the chance of me winning is 50 50. For example, if I say tossing a coin, okay, once, and if you have to toss a coin once, we have only two sides either we, play, we, we toss maybe a head or a tail. Okay, so in this situation, we say we have 50 50 chance. If you have an even chance it means you that say yes or no win or lose toss head or tail if it is about die you can either throw an even number or odd number that is 150 um, 50 chance then we have unlikely event unlikely event event that is not so much close to even chance and not so to let's say uh well not exactly impossible event it's unlikely for example if i'm to throw a die again and i say what is the chance of me throwing one throwing one is one out of six and the chance of winning is not so much um clear i mean it's an unlikely event then we have likely event which is also closer to getting 100 percent example if i have four balls or four pebbles and three of them are red and one is blue. And I put them in a box and I ask you, what is the probability that if you drop your hand into this box, you are going to get a red, a red pebble? I mean, the chance of getting red pebble is very high because there are more red pebbles in the box than the blue. And so that is more likely occurrence, more likely occurrence. I'm sure you mix, you pause, you can pause this video and make your notes some of the things you need to write. For example, we've mentioned the definition of probability, which is very important for you to write. As for the reason why we learn probability, I mean, you don't need to write anything there, but maybe if you want to write it for you to know that probability is very important for you, fine. Then when you come to this particular chart that you see here, you can also draw it in your note. I mean, the even chart, the likely chance and an unlikely chance. Now let's look at some basic terms in learn probability some of these things are very important to you because for you to understand probability you need to understand some basic terms and so this first video we want to cover some basic terms of probability now what first one is experiment what is an experiment we're using this a lot in our probability lessons any action or operation where the result is uncertain where the result is uncertain is Called experiment. Example, a football match. You don't know the outcome. And so it's an experiment. If I'm tossing um, or throwing a die, I don't know the outcome. So it's an experiment. About tossing a coin, it's an experiment because I don't know the outcome. Then the next term I want you to take notes and write down is trial. Trial. And by definition, we say a single performance of an experiment is trial. So we are about playing a game. One single performance of the game is a trial. We are about tossing the coin. You toss it once, it's a trial, right? So let's say if I throw this die once, I've thrown it once, that's a trial. And these are the possible outcomes. I toss a coin, I toss it once, it's a trial. If I do twice, two trials, three times, I can do four times and so on and so forth, right? Then another term you need to put down is sample space. Just write a definition here because there will be a whole I mean, topic on sample space where we will look at how to generate sample space. That'll be our next video. So, but for now, just know the term as it being all possible outcome of an experiment, all possible outcome of an experiment. For example, a football match between two teams, what are the possible outcomes? Two teams, either team A wins or team A loses, or team B wins or team B loses, or both do not win. Let's say draw. So the possible outcome for a football game like this is win, lose, or draw. 
if it is let's say um a table tennis game that one we don't have draw either you win or you lose so that will that will give us two possible outcomes but if it's a football match we can get three possible outcomes unless it is a final match if it's a final match up for that one we know it's not going to be that then tossing the coin what are the possible outcome tossing the coin either you get head or you get tail we'll be doing more of this as we progress then let's talk about events events and this is also another critical word that we'll be using a lot in our work most of the calculations we'll be doing will be calculating the probability of an event. So you have to understand the word event. A single result of an experiment is an event. A single result of an experiment is an event. Or we can say event is a subset of a sample space. You have to write all this fast down in your notes. Make a very good note. When you school reopen, you go to school or you are in school and after going through this lesson, any teacher teaches you you can be sure that whatever answers, I mean, notes that you have here will be enough. So you don't need to write any notes again. All right. Then we say that, so let's say if I'm to throw a coin and my target is to get till, then the event becomes um, till. So here you can see that I've said the event, which is E, using E to represent the event, and event is till. That is my target, getting a till when tossing the coin. Or if I'm to toss, a die and my target is to get even number then the number of even numbers i have in my sample space become my event and like we said it's a subset of the sample space so if the sample space is one two three four five six six and my chance of event or my event is getting odd number or even number then i can pick even number out of the sample space that's what we see um event is a subset of a sample space then another word we need to take note of is random sampling actually everything we are going to study about probability is random sampling we are going to look at it in terms of randomly because we don't want to have any bias form of experiment so this refers to choosing a sample from a population without being biased without being biased for example if i give you this particular machine here and uh, I tell you that, okay, we are going to roll this machine and these balls are in. And as we roll, press a button and one ball will drop. In fact, the chance of the ball dropping will not be biased because it will be very fair. All of them are of the same size, the same uh, material. And I drop, I put all of them in the I feel like this and I roll them. I can only let any of them can come out. So that becomes a sample, random sampling random sampling all right so we will um end this first section as introductory part of the probability here and on our next lesson we are going to look at sample space look at classical definition then we can start solving questions involving probability so for this very video it's all about the introduction aspect of probability and i'm sure you've enjoyed it because probability is not anything big deal it's things that we see in and around ourselves Thanks so much for watching. Let's meet on our next lesson. Bye-bye.